identify and analyze. Two things you're going to have to do. The first thing is a group activity. Now, if you're doing this on your own and you're at home, a good idea is to get your mum or your dad, brother or sister, to share their ideas as well. It's called Watson and the Shark. It was painted in 1778 by John Copley. He had to use visual conventions, that's visual literacy. You have to analyse the image and identify how he used them. We call this the elements of design and principles of composition and the focal points where we look to help us understand the narrative, the story. Well, what do we know about the picture already? We know it's called Watson and the Shark, so we know the boy in the water is Watson, and we know there's a shark, not two, just one. And we know it's old, 1778, and we can see that from the ships and the style of the clothing. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to look at the elements of design and principles of composition, and this is a link to it right here, to try and understand how we look at the focal points and how that helps us understand the narrative. We'll do that together, and then afterwards you're going to try on your own. When you come to answer the questions about Watson and the Shark, again, in a group activity, share your ideas and write the answers down. It's about how the artist used the elements of line and shape to direct our view to focal points, the elements of colour and tone to direct our view to focal points, and of course, how the artist used other elements and principles to direct our view to the focal points or away from antifocal points. What narrative were we supposed to understand? How has the use of the elements and principles helped us understand that narrative? And question six, how has the artist used symbolic imagery in the painting? Narrative, a story or a description of a series of events. The narrative in John Copley's Watson and the Shark is one of great drama and fear. The viewer doesn't know if young Watson will survive the vicious attack. When we talk about symbolism, that's the practice of representing things by symbols. He gave a red rose to his wife on Valentine's Day, because a red rose is a symbol for love. We need to identify. What is the story? Well, there are people in the story. This man looks extremely concerned. These two men look desperate. This man looks determined, while his companion looks very worried. And Watson it look extremely frayed. This man plays an important role in this painting against the shark, I suppose the enemy. Well, you can identify it very easily and you can probably come up with the story very easily because you know it's called Watson and the Shark. But we need to try and understand how we're being forced to look in certain areas. Sorry about that. So we analyse. So to analyse we have to find out what are the focal points and what forces us to look at them. Later what is an anti-focal point? Well to do that we can look at the use of line, shape and form. Now you're already looking at certain areas of the painting and perhaps not looking at certain areas so much. Well let's look at the use of line, shape and form forces us to look at those areas. First of all, line. These two directional lines that make one big triangle, the shape, are forcing our attention down to Watson. If we're looking at these men, then we're going to be forced to look at Watson himself. There's an even stronger geometric line, the boat hook, held by this man, perhaps the hero of the piece, maybe. It pulls our attention all the way down, forcing us to look at the shark. The shark itself is a line, a shape, forms about three dimensions. It is one line because it's one shark. As the tail leaves the composition, it comes back in and our view was pulled back round to the shark. And of course the shark is looking at Watson and Watson is looking at the shark. One of the largest use of line, shape and form, of course, is the boat as it travels into the painting. It's stopped by the shark and the view of the boat hook. Wherever we look, the men are looking down at Watson or the shark, 
our eyes are drawn to them. But also it's where we don't look. Use of line stops us looking down at the bottom. The soft, gentle waves really push our eyes back again. The soft, fluffy clouds, even the gentle lines in the background, aren't strong enough to capture our attention. Use of line, shape and form means we're constantly looking back down to what's happening in the water. Colour, tone and texture. Colour is something perhaps quite new to you we haven't spent much time on yet. But if you were in the last lesson you remember that opposite colours contrast, they complement each other, we call them complementary colours. Yellow and purple, red and green and blue and orange. Any colour opposite in the colour wheel enhances the other and forces the other colour to stand out more. Warm colours, reds and oranges and yellows, they stand out, they come to the front. Cool colours like greens and blues, they sit back. There's a lot of green in this picture. The sea is green. Perhaps it shouldn't be green, and we'll talk about that later, because the sky is blue. But the sea in this case, in this painting, is green. And what's complementary to green? Red. Is there any red in the painting? In the neckerchiefs and the skin tone of most of the men, we'll find a lot of red. It contrasts against the green. Further down in the painting, we find red on the shark's teeth. And there's some more red. And it's hidden, but we see it. This is a true story, of course. Watson survived this. And we know he survived this, and we can look at symbolism later to, to find out why. But he was left with one leg. If you look at Watson's right leg, we don't see the foot below the ankle, but we do see red. Blood. That means the shark is coming back in for another attack. In fact, this is the third time the shark lunges at him. Tone is about light and dark. The use of tone helps us concentrate on the focal points. The greatest tonal contrast between light and dark happens in the mid-ground here. Our hero, these men, and Watson, and the glint of the shark's teeth. We go from light to dark in these areas very quickly. Therefore, we're going to look at them. They stand out. Around the edges and the background and the corners, there's a lot more mid-tones. They won't stand out as much. Perhaps we're not looking there. And the use of texture, the soft, gentle texture of the sea and the fluffy clouds against more the hard textures of the boat hook, the teeth and the boat itself, those contrasts force us to look more at the focal points. As we look at the focal points, we have to remember that that's where Copley wants us to look. So that's where the story is. Even without researching, we can understand this story very easily. But then we can talk about use of symbolism. Symbols that represent ideas. Well, obviously, this man is our hero. You can see in his determination. If you were to do some research, you'd find out a lot more about him. The rope is symbolic. We know Watson survives. The African-American man is holding the rope as it trails over Watson's arm. This is a symbolic reference of the connection that Watson has with the boat and how he'll be saved. Art of this time was famous for having a lot of symbolic references in it. And the sky is no mistake. The turgid green waters in the Caribbean, where it's set, are very different from the sky and the gentle, warm, fluffy clouds. There has been a storm. And the storm is passing and the blue sky returns. That means Watson's going to be OK. If you want to find out some more, Click on the link in the presentation I've shared with you and you'll be able to find some more information. But to summarise, we identify and analyse the use of visual conventions. We call that visual literacy, the language of art, how we read pictures. This analysis helps us understand the narrative, the story. We can apply this to any artwork because we can read pictures. We're amazing. Now, you need to prove you can do this, but by yourself. In your folio, you'll find a slide for Evicted, painted in 1887 by Blandford Fletcher. Apply the same approach, answer the same questions. You'll be surprised how much information can be found without doing any research at all.